y'all armand wiggins week two you already know i guess we are the monsters now which is cute i had to let it sink in at first i was like what the fuck is this but armand and then we're all his stars armand is a star monster rah, 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 da, da. that's the first thing i thought of you're just gonna have to give me a minute because i don't have those emojis in my recents and I don't know what I need to type in to make it pop up automatically, but um, you don't have to give me a minute, okay, to start throwing up monsters and stars, baby. But um, yes, we're going to do a watch with me. You know, that's what I like to do. I got my snacks and shit. Let's do a watch with me. Jordan and we are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to sip on this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? What's going on, Claudia? You're looking nice and fresh. We're matching today. We're matching today. Must have won some money at the casino. Um, I've been getting my butt kicked by College Hill. The the, the work is hard, and I think the teachers are doing she's a little bit extra because she's the still there. So like we ain't gonna let you off easy here, uh, baby. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna go tonight though. Uh, but yeah, fun time. But we're gonna get into your weekend and what you did in a minute. Please welcome back our special guest co-host who is back with us for another week, Mr. Armand Wiggins. What's up, Armand? What's going on, Claudia? What's going on, Al? You guys look really, really good. I don't know. The skin is popping on both of y'all <laughs> and the white. Y'all look bright, fresh. It uh, looks uh, good. And I'm happy to be back. Because you know what they say, in order to really be snatched, you need round two. So. More, more, please, more, more. <laughs> Compliments will get you that seat. More, give me well, some. You are matching your color coordinating with us tonight. Okay. Hopefully, we are gonna give them some good commentary tonight and lots of fun. How was everybody's weekend? Al, I know you were out about weekend. Yeah, you know, this weekend was the Tag Awards. Oh damn, and my bad. The, uh, film in the 39th annual Film Independent Spirit Awards. I wasn't able to cover the carpet for the SAG Awards, but obviously everybody that won at the SAGs did come to the Independent Film Awards the next day to support their, their colleagues. It was amazing. I can't wait to show um, my, our experience there. Uh, there were more black actors and actors on that carpet than any other carpet this year, and I can't wait to give you an inside look of everything that we asked them. All right, nice. Uh, Armand, how was your weekend? Did you do anything fun or...? Honestly, you know what? I just kind of chilled and kind of got ready for the week. Um, so I like to chill because I was like, it's going to be a very busy week. So I'm still on my cleanse. So I just kind of been meditating and kind of taking it easy. So it's been a pretty chill weekend for me. You're on a cleanse? Was it no alcohol? Is it There's no alcohol, no real partying, no vaping. Um, oh, and I've been watching. I was. I really didn't really go outside much because I have to watch that Wendy Williams documentary like every day. I, you know, I have to. I, that's my girl. So, are we talking about that today? I'm vaping, bitch. I think we're gonna get into that a little bit. You know, Black China is my roommate in Colin College Hill, and she has a appearance on that show. So it's you know she had something to say about that. So sad, sad times. We're gonna definitely get into that and cover that. That is our girl, and actually TJF is kind of uh, inspired by that show. So we are here today doing hot topics. And, yeah, she's uh, the we, goat. Uh, she started it, bitch. Really not kind of. Right, Y'all sipping tonight or not? What we doing? We drinking or we having a dry? It's four K people in the chat, mind well, you. I'm start drinking, but you know I, today is my teacher 4K. day. Four um, K. You guys know I'm a professor at Bowie State University, so it's a long day for me. I just got in this seat literally like five minutes ago. As soon as we take a break, I'm going to go pop some champagne and hop back in. So, yeah, I'm going to be drinking a little bit, but right now it's Gatorade. Armand? I am so upset because I feel like every time I come here, I'm not able to drink. So right now, I'm just drinking Red Bull. It's an upgrade from water. I'm on. I'm on. We were a guest last time, so we weren't that familiar. But I'm gonna have to give it to you like I would give Funky. It's giving very much antibiotics round. Like, why is it the second time? Just because he gay. It's just because I feel like you're a party girl, but you're not partying with him. What is right, I'm right, I'm right, offended. And is it staying in the house? Right. Who are you? Sub's not adding up. I'm almost. I'm almost there. Let me tell you something. Honestly, I feel like the cleanse is working. Look. I got round two on the show. Right. I to stay on my fast here. 
Right, okay. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, not drinking is not going to get you the job. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I'm not drinking because of College Hill, but guess what? Tonight is the premiere of my show on NBC. Right after this, make sure you go to your TVs and turn on, turn on to uh, turn on to NBC. I got Deal or No Deal Island. It's the biggest game show prize. There ain't nobody for to watch Deal or No Deal just to watch NBC your ass. At 930 That's why she happy. Check it out and see what happens and why I was gone this summer. It's crazy. All right. We, we who watches show, Deal or No Deal, Claudia? To the family of Flint City Councilman Eric Mays. Bitch in La La Land. Now, Councilman Mays was extremely yeah. bold, and uh, he had a lot of unwavering support and activism for the water crisis in Flint, Michigan, which is not done yet. And if you know about Eric Mays, he was I had a following on t TikTok because he used to let those people have it. Yes. Any quick thoughts you guys would like to share? Uh, what about? happened to uh, him? You know what? I just would like to, to echo what Little Miss Flint said. She praised him for always supporting and helping her coming out to support the regular people of the city as a councilman right. and whatever efforts they were doing, whether it was in church or whether it was a clothing drive or whether it was a Christmas drive, whatever it was. So I'm going to lie. I'm going to land on the positive um, of what he actually uh, contributed right. to the city of Flint, Michigan. Oh, man. Yeah, I think, you know... It's the, still Black History Month. I, I wouldn't be me if I didn't give it up. I think this is interesting. I think that it's pretty funny that, you know, you know, you got this councilman. He's been respected in this community for over 10 years in city council. Ran for right. mayor. Didn't quite get it, but the people loved him. However, the man's 65 years old. He passes away while under investigation, okay, because he had been, you know, suspended for 90 days for, you know... Uh, what did they say? Ra uh, using a lot of racial rhetoric and um, oh lord, I don't know. I think that's very interesting because he had to pay over twenty three thousand dollars in legal fees, and he wasn't reporting how he was getting the money. And it was, and he was supposed to let people know where he was actually who was donating the money, and he didn't let them know that. So the man is under investigation, and he dies in the middle of the investigation. I know that's not funny, but it's just kind of one of those things that's like, well, at least you don't have to pay back those fees. That's one way of getting out of bed. Wow. You know what I mean? Donald Trump, are you watching? <laughs> the lights. All right, let's start this show. Social media has been buzzing after parts one that and was two a of Wendy Williams' documentary, Where is Wendy Williams? premiered a lifetime. Now, one person tweeted, who's behind taking Wendy away from her son while in Florida? It seems like after that, that was her real downfall. Now, who are these people caring for her? Who hired them? Who did Wells Fargo talk to? Has Wendy ever had legal representation help for hashtag Wendy Williams? The person tweeted, Wendy Williams was placed under a financial guardianship by Wells Fargo in 2022. It's really amazing to me how much of a discourse has been about whether she's Spin a bad out, person bitch. or whether having dementia is uh. an excuse. But just on Wendy's documentary, Armand, I know you uh, have a lot to say about this. Uh, yeah, so... I I won't get long-winded, but I love the documentary. I thought the documentary was amazing. Um, when I watched it, though, at first I didn't know how to feel about it. I didn't know mm -hmm. where I was, where it was going, and I was thinking to myself, "Why did Wendy do this? You know, right. why would she sign up for this?" Because I watched an interview where the niece went on the View, and she talked about how this was Wendy's idea, so they weren't exploiting her. Wendy had a three-contract deal with Lifetime to put out three uh, docu series, so. This was Wendy's idea. And upon watching it, I'm like, Wendy is really, really erratic. Um, she's showing a different side of herself. And why would she want to do this? Um, and she kept mentioning podcasts, podcasts. So in my mind, I thought, did they trick this woman into thinking that this was a podcast and this actually isn't a podcast? This is actually a documentary and she doesn't realize it? Until the last part of the documentary, actually the add-on is what I like to call it. The add-on of the documentary when her sister wanted Sorry, to Sorry, y'all. It all made sense to me. Yeah. Um, so when I gathered from this, this was all to overturn the guardianship because it's up for renewal in 2024. So I think that this was this was to show the world that look at Wendy Williams and her health decline underneath this guardianship. And she needs to be with her family because this conservatorship does not care about Wendy Williams. It's actually enabling her, which inevitably will be her demise. So I think that Wendy Williams, alongside with her family, are all in this plan to overturn the conservatorship. And they wanted us to see it play out in real time so she had to show the nigga <laughs> and all the dark sides of it for us to be under un, be able to understand what's right, actually going right. on underneath this guardian so i thought it was great okay thanks for that al what are your thoughts okay thanks for that
It wasn't that what he said. Oh. <laughs> I mean, to agree with that, Armand. Um, I think you know, being a person that's been in this industry, who's managed a talent at the level of a Wendy, not as big, but as influential, as well as just being a brand manager. You see how Armand was looking. Perspective from the very beginning, you guys know that I was like, "Our what Reynolds, the heck is going listen. on? This is heartbreaking. It's sad to watch. This is horrible. Why would anybody do this? I was very prepared to come on this show." and be upset and point the fingers at lifetime executives who should have never signed off on anything related to Sean Wendy Williams in this light. But then I really started to think about it, and we have to give Wendy credit for what Wendy is good at. Wendy is um, a mastermind of television and storytelling. That's why she's so great. I think, and I don't know if this is a long shot or not, but I think this is a setup to one of entertainment's largest comebacks. If Wendy Williams ever gets the help, support, Shut and the rehab fuck that up. she needs and comes back to television, by television taking her to her absolutely bottom, airing out her absolutely worst sides that we ever would want to see or hear, and then watch her come back healthy and doing television or podcasting. Are you fucking stupid? <laughs> Ow. Wendy Williams, I don't know if you know what the fuck dementia is, but there is no getting better. There is no reversing it. There is no healthy. I mean, there is eventually healthy, but brain-wise, it's I mean, it's it's gone. Some of it has deteriorated. Come on. Do you not know what fucking dementia is? You fucking idiot. I mean, these fucking people, they claim to be so goddamn smart. Are you saving face? Is that what it is? I don't know what the fuck. What the fuck? But these, I don't know if it's their age or I'm sorry to keep bringing up age. But are you that out of touch? Like, are you that are gone to not want to think outside of the realm i mean critical thinking here people fuck again the reward from that is going to be the largest and the best we've ever seen in the business i'm going to take a positive stance on this because i would hate to think that anyone anyone working with her at this stage is exposing or taking advantage of her at this idiot level. so for me this is brilliancy in the act, if it's how I interpret it. If not, it's probably the biggest tragedy that I've ever witnessed in entertainment history. <laughs> we said the same thing. Really? Damn no, near. You, you said it was produced to get her out of the conservatorship. I don't believe that. I think Wendy is smart, and I think she knows that this is a way to set up a comeback. Not a comeback out of a conservatorship, but a comeback in television. If she rehabs herself, she gets herself together, treat all her ailments. Okay, yeah, he's saying the same thing. And get back on track to being the This ain't the same thing. Know. Shut the fuck okay, up. Okay, I'm on. I'm, I'm let the boys okay. back. I'm on. So, okay, did you, watch, did you watch the end of the documentary? So, this is, did you see the end? Where, I didn't see the end, no. Nope. Okay, so there was a call that was made. Wendy Williams you didn't watch the end. came down and said, and she said, Go to hell. Wendy was so happy because I said, I called Wendy and I said, I'm going to be a part of the documentary. And Wendy was excited. Wendy called while the sister was filming, got on the phone. She, the sister Wanda took Wendy off a speaker. She said, You know what? Write everything down. Say that you let her know. Write this in your notebook. You know, you reached out, you called on this day. She didn't answer. Didn't answer this day. And then the producer, she said, I got to call you back. Produ producer said, Hey, can you talk about what's going on with that? She said, no, I cannot. But what I will say is it feels like I'm talking to the old Wendy Williams. And the conservatorship is up for renewal in 2024. And if, if it's my goal, I, I hope that Wendy Williams is able to speak for herself in court. So to me, then at the end, they said this was to rip the veil off of conservatorship and guardianship. So I feel as though Wendy Williams has been in this facility for almost a year now. She went in in April. 
that call was taking place in October of 2023. That had been seven months. Wendy Williams, at, during the time of that call, had been Thanks. sober for over seven months. So this is alcohol-induced dementia. So right. my mind is starting to kind of come back a little bit. It's, been, it's able to be reversed. So I think that Wendy Williams it was a lot more coherent in understanding as to what was going on. And her and her family are trying to overturn the conservatorship because all her money is tied up. Right. So that was just my thoughts on it. All right. Well, but wait a minute. Reversing a conservatorship where where uh, Kevin Hunter is saying that the sister stole fifteen million dollars from Wendy. Uh, reversing a conservatorship, the judge is going to look at the documentary and say, "Oh, clearly this is a very tough situation. We need to keep the most respected and the most trained people to to keep managing her." That's why the court it, it um, put the guardian into place now because it was court ordered. Long, go ahead and go to the chat, Claudia, because this one we can talk about all night. Yeah, we can. We can. We can. <laughs> about to uh and the cutie says she may have that form of dementia which makes people angry house i mean uh yes and um let's see we have sheeny beanie said wendy needs to be with her family she was healthy when she was in miami Cow uh, copper cowboy says wendy's hurting in more ways than we ever knew there's no coming back in the ways we've seen her go from radio to tv that is it watch it watch it or don't take what you will from it or don't uh okay um well hey we will keep it going, and we will keep y'all updated, Armand and Al. Uh, thanks for your takes okay. on that. Very, very in-depth takes on that. And we'll see who's right. <laughs> Portia Williams recently filed for divorce from her husband of 18 months, Simon Gobadia. This shocking news comes just Is that after you Portia announced her that return to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm trying to get Simon's it right. battle with obtaining U.S. citizenship due to his father's Oh, shit. Do you think this come as a shock? Yeah. This is part of the storyline, Al. Um, I. Which part, Claudia? I'm so confused. How about, okay, let's start, let's break it down. Let's start with okay. divorce after 15 months because they look so happy. Right. And according to the Post, just a couple of days ago before hmm. the announcement, they were riding and hugging and kissing and all over each other. Um, for some reason, my gut just doesn't feel comfortable with all of this. It's funny how it's all coming out and it's percolating and all being unveiled right after she announced that she's coming back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. That's why it feels so storyline to me. But this is the deal. When I start to feel like stuff is contrived, then I no longer am emotionally vested. And I really hope that Portia and Simon, I hope all of this is real because we, you, Portia, we love you. We like you. You make great television. And we're emotionally invested. But if we start to feel like you're taking advantage of us and this is contrived and it's all to make your comeback interesting to give you a storyline we're very fickle in media we're very fickle in america we could turn our backs on you and we don't want that to happen i hope this is real i hope everything that you're going through is real time and it's not for a storyline but the bigger picture for me here is i just wish reality shows would do a better job a job of portraying the sanctuary of marriage because mm -hmm. what message is that actually sending to young girls out here today as it relates to marriage? So if you want the sanctuary of marriage to be protected, don't marry someone who's on his fourth or fifth wife. <laughs> I'm just saying, Simon Gabadia, I mean, how many times you got to get married to try to get this citizenship together? Because Jesus, once, twice, three times a lady. Uh, Armand, what do you think about this? Storyline or not? I felt like it was storyline until it came out that he owed almost a million dollars to NetJet. So I feel like Portia said it. Damn. Like, what the hell with this? He not been have my money tied up. Okay. I'm out of here. You know, I think Simon don't have no money. That's that's the bottom line. The, nigga, the guy's broke. He don't have no money. And at this point, it's now starting to bleed into Portia. So she like, you know what? I love you, but I tried to ride with you. But now your bad business is affecting me. And we all know at this point, Portia thought she had her old African Nigerian king. And once she realized that the money was going to have to come out of her pocket, she quickly then realized that, listen, this is not going to work for me anymore. That's how I feel about the situation. So it just came at a time to where everything came out at once. But I personally feel as though she don't want she don't want to take on his debt. Wait a minute, uh, uh, Armand. So you're saying then, in, in essence, you're saying that they lied to us at the top of this marriage. They lied to us when they showed how wealthy he was, saying that he's worth about $50 million. Are you saying that all we don't that know. is fake? 
I'd like to talk are you saying that they ran through it all? What are you saying? Uh, let me jump in. Go ahead, go ahead, Let me jump in real quick. Uh, my girl Tisa Tales, uh, who has done put a lot of time and actually her popularity on YouTube kind of grew because of her in-depth investigation into Simon Gavadia. She told us two or three years ago that Simon was a scammer. Now listen. Portia and I and our friends, I don't talk to her, but I can respect that woman's hustle. That woman had Dish Nation going on. She had Real Housewives of Atlanta going on. She was a darling of Bravo, and she did a great job on Ultimate Girls Trip. She should have never quit her job for a man that no one could find any history of his actual dealings in business. I can get do with wow. it, open up a DBA, doing business as whatever enterprises, and say I do petroleum, that doesn't mean I do petroleum. And my rich African friends tell me they don't know who this man is. They've never seen, they don't know him in those circles. I got a text from someone today because, you know, you girls be knowing people. They said that my paid $25,000 payment on a used jet, and he never made another payment on a $900,000 contract. Now, we know a lot of celebrities that will go and do this for the gram. They will rent a house in the hills for $30,000 a month. And because of certain states with certain laws that are fairly, that are that are kind to residents, tenants, you can actually stay there for a long time, just like during COVID. I could rent a mansion, and they ain't going to kick me out for two years because of the laws. I think this is what? something. Now, I heard this is alleged, 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 alleged. Mm. This is You're crazy. loving this, Claudia. You are loving this. <laughs> okay. I, I took oh, my hey, ass off. It's a candy, man. Okay. Claudia, you're, you're loving this before it's you, aren't you? I, well, I told you, if my hair is done right, we're going to have a good show. And so, Claudia, let's come back. Let's come back to your hot tea. What? After my hair is done right. right. Oh, We're gonna have a good show. Hold on. All right. Hold on. Well, I'll give like y'all another cliffhanger when we come back from this uh, this commercial because you know we need a minute's watch. We'll be right back. We need to bring this back down. <laughs> okay. How you been liking it, Dustin? It's giving and. and Let me hear something to drink. I want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out. Woo! Welcome back to TGIF. If you're just joining us before we went to break, things were getting very hot and very uh, uh, peaceful. <laughs> Which <here>. story? <laughs> so we're talking about Portia and Simon about it, and I made it very clear this is no shade towards Portia. This is all about Simon. I am coming to Simon Gubadi right now. My friend said that your money came because you got a wire that wasn't supposed to go to you, allegedly, and you intercepted it. Now, her mm. friend him out of money, and that's why you have you are able to provide some of the lifestyle, but you don't have the backing. There's no records of your business. And why would a multi-billionaire need to uh, be engaged with so much fraud? Please tell me the answer to that. Right. Multi-billionaires and millions that I know, they have businesses. They have businesses. You can trace them. They file taxes. They have employees, not just one desk. Or a laptop in an office, in a room of your house. Um, I think Simon has always wanted to be on television. Fallon has told us that he pushed her to be on Real Housewives. Didn't wow. quite work out with Fallon, but guess what? Portia Williams. She likes husbands, so he went and got with her. Uh, I do think at first Portia was being a little shady, my opinion. But I actually do, I will say this, I do think she actually did end up loving this man. Because I don't think you can fake how she was looking around him. Yeah. But she's the best actress in the world, like better than Angela Bassett. Because she looks happy around him. She really does. And I think when she found out that this man, like all that glitters was not gold, it was in, in fact fool's gold. I think she was like, you should <laughs> do the right thing. Portia, protect your assets. Because at this point, it's giving you're richer than him. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're legit. Yes. It's not. It's giving he needs you for citizenship and your coin. And I hope you don't, I hope you don't, I hope you don't get it from you, girlfriend. You right. don't help this man with his makeover. You got him on Ozempic. You got the new teeth. You did your part. You should be very happy. You gave back to the community. Right. Okay. Billy Dee Williams is finally addressing the rumors that have been circulating since the 70s. It's Billy Dee gay. Billy Dee told Page Six, I've been called a closet queen, but I don't pay much attention to any of that. Billy also revealed that he was always comfortable hanging out with members of the LBGTQIA plus community and even attended secret gay parties in the Metropolitan Opera's basement. Oh, hell he yeah. He was an extra. Um, what are your thoughts about ability addressing these rumors? Do you think he should have or would you ever address hell them? Hell no. Um, 
You know what? I didn't know who he was, so I had to go dig and dig and do some, some research. I don't think he's gay. Wait, I wait, think... wait, wait, wait. Hold up. I didn't know. Hold up. Oh, oh girl. Similac on his breath. Ow. Never heard of him. Yes, we're oh, young, ho. So yes. So You're oh, old. Oh, Next. Oh, Next. Okay, yes. Son's older than my dad. He's a legend. Do you know who Sidney Poitier was or, or any of those? I've heard oh, of it. Young oh, no. Oh. Oh. No. Okay. oh. Do you know who Cicely Tyson is? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay last man, one. Go to I've heard Belafonte. I've heard, yes. I know I've heard the name before. But I've heard. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> Give me a break. Uh -uh, okay, buddy. go ahead. We have to send you some old Jet magazines. You can so catch listen, that's not popping right now, ho. Y'all love to live in the past. So I don't think he's uh, gay. I thought he was a pretty boy during his heyday, and I think that he got a lot of attention. You know, he's kind of like <laughs> one of those guys that are like what we would call metrosexual now, I feel like. I feel like he, they could fit into many different circles. So I think he was more of a fluid personality, and I think that he, he's one of those guys that probably attract men and women and just like the attention. I don't really think he's gay. I just think he likes attention. But he did, you know, stumble up and say he addressed. He finds himself as a himself and herself. But it was more about addressing his feminine side and his masculine side. I just think that's just. I don't know. I don't think he's gay. I don't think the guy's gay. I just think that he likes to play both sides and he likes the attention. Okay, Al Reynolds, what say you? You know, I think who cares? <laughs> I know what type of show this is, TJ. I have an understanding we're a tabloid show. Um, and we talk about things in the media, but I'm exhausted with this conversation. And why is the narrative for me? Why a hit dog will holler. That is brought up when it comes to a black man brought up by the black community, right? I, I just, just because to you were in the closet is, what is the, in the, the public uh, the obsession of black men's sexuality in up. the black community. You don't see this in main media uh, circles. You don't see this by white colleagues. You don't see them outing each other or trying to out each other or calling each other gay. So that's Shut my biggest thing. Cares. Why is it a big deal? You're on the show. Talk about it. Or into both. You mad because you married a bitch a actor. and you He's gay? He's one of the few African-American actors of his time after 50 years of being in the business, still in the business with oh, the largest boy. franchise in the entertainment business, in the entertainment industry, which is Star Wars. This man has evolved in so many ways I'm that so to tired me, is he should be speaking about his talent and not about his sexuality. Two things I'm going to say about that. I, I agree with you. I'm going to say this. I only care if you're trying to trick a woman and have the whole, like, act like you're a heterosexual man and you have a whole sick double life. I don't think that's cool to lie about anything to your partner, never mind your sexuality. I think, right. in general, I just think you should be who you are and live your truth, whatever that truth is. There are people that are okay. There are lots of women that are okay with you being bisexual. There's proof of that. Second of all, as far as, like, the black community dragging black men's sexuality, I agree. But I'm going to make a bigger point. You know me, I was a little broad. Black people, we are just mean to each other, period. We, we don't do the white folks. We are so kind and polite mm -hmm. a lot of times. That's why I always take any opportunity on this show to, uh, now, if it was a white person, if it was a white, because we are so mean to each other. The most hate we all get has been on black blogs. Yes. It's on black shows. Mm, I, I don't think they talk to me on TMZ, but they'll come on a black blog or a black YouTuber or a black whatever. So that's no, shut the fuck up. And I think that's Damn. a good conversation we need to have about why don't we protect our own ever? We don't. You see the white people, and uh, you make a great point. Get off, get off the show, then. We be the ones that, oh, he gay, she gay, she this, she Get off the show. Girl, and we seem to revel in that. Shut the and fuck up. And unfortunately, we get paid a lot of money when that happens, and I wish we would get away from that. Like, why don't we do gossip shows where we kind of come for them sometimes? Because we are so busy tearing each other down, and then we get outraged when it happens. We don't like, know our, them. Like, in our we don't give a fuck about white people. Black women. No, we come for each other too much, period. And I hope y'all feel me on this, because I feel like Aren't y'all tired? Right. I also, I'm sorry. I also just want to make sure that we understand that when you put these stains on actors like this, you're affecting their ability and their rate to make money. The reason why the majority community does not do it because all black male actors are a little zesty. Money Come on. Their rate and Look at Jonathan their Majors. Come on, y'all. We got to do better if we want to be taken better and serious, more serious in the entertainment. Look at Jonathan Majors. Look at um Michael B. Jordan. 
They always made fun of coming up as jits. Cause they're a little zesty. It's okay. What dude you know is fucking taking theater class? You know, I mean, it's okay. Fuck. And then last thing, at, last thing, and at this point, at eighty six, he's already. I mean, at this point, it's done. It doesn't matter. At eighty six years old, it doesn't matter if he's gay or not. He's lived his life. He's tricked whoever he's going to trick or whatever, or denied it. At this point, stay in the closet, come out the closet. It doesn't matter at this point. 86 years old. Who cares? Exactly. Uh, this is one I don't care about. Like, I ain't dating you, and none of my friends are. And are you even dating at 86? Because I think so. <laughs> you give it, if it works, you give Doesn't it. Doesn't Robert De Niro got a baby at 90? Yeah, they be heavy on them. Bad. <laughs> let's stop coming to the white celebrities. Stop trying to try to start with the black ones. Okay, Robert De Niro. All right, let's get to some of the chat, because they have a lot to say. Uh, Ansel D'Angelo said, I think Billy Dee's straight, but probably messed around with a guy or two at one of those parties back in the day. Doesn't mean he's not straight. Uh, <laughs> Crystal Leaves 10 said, Billy Dee is the ish. He's always been a sex symbol. And Nicole Blue said, y'all quick to call black men sassy for any reason. That's why. That's true. And uh, Stevie Ray, a man, I think a black man said he's a power bottom. Stevie Ray, what's wrong with being a power bottom? I'm a power <laughs> bottom. <laughs> okay, moving on. I owe this segue. Charlemagne is receiving backlash after grouping TikTok viral sensation Risa Tisa. Is it Risa Tisa? With those who have big backs. The hosts were discussing her viral story, Who the Bleep Did I Marry? Which is a 50 part series about her getting scammed by a man she met on Facebook back in 2020. Now, Charlemagne say, stated that it was giving big back behavior. Uh -huh. He also said, some of you big backs, y'all gotta stop being so thirsty for a man. Uh -huh. Do you guys Charlamagne think said that? Was out of line? And what you think about this big back thing? We used to talk about big backs a lot. We have to play them. Now I'm getting a big back out here. Huh? Right, right, right. We talked a lot about the big backs. You know what? For me, I wasn't shocked. If you know Charlemagne, if you know his type of journalism, if you know Breakfast Club's journalism. type of journalism, this is how they share their perspective and what they think. And I think that I'm not journalism, okay. bitch. Now, if this was coming from a Gail King, we should be shocked and outraged. Or from an Oprah, we should be shocked and outraged. But from Charlemagne, no. We've we've seen him, you know, in these murky waters and make comments like this for a while, but we understand that that's to be expected. So I wasn't shocked. I think that the issue here is the outrage or what I view as, you know, misplaced energy or the fake outrage. That's where yeah. I am with it. So I don't know. I wasn't. Offended, I agree with you, Mulatto. I've never had a big back. I've dated a big back. You know, <laughs> and, and I said, Star hey, Jones? The advice given to the big backs that he did share is advice that could work for all women. All women, you talking about Star so Jones for a man that they pretend uh, like they're not seeing stuff, hearing stuff, witnessing stuff, or going through stuff that's right there up underneath their nose. That is how I feel about his comment. So, you dated a big back, yeah. Star Jones. There's uh, nothing wrong with big back women. They they take good care of us, us light skinned brothers. <laughs> wow. Ow. Oh, wow. I was with you, Al, but I can't. Well, on this one, I think Charlemagne is completely out of here for that. Charlemagne is corny as hell for that because the simple fact of this, like, I didn't sit and watch the 50 part series, but I read an article on Rolling Stone that pretty much um, summed it up. The woman is no different than any one of us who found somebody during the pandemic fell in love he was selling her dreams she thought she met a great guy he was doing all the things that a guy would do he just was not really who he said he was or he was pretending right. to be that's not her fault that she fell for him we've all fallen short falling in love at some point you know what i mean and i think that when you have shows out here where people are winning emmys for like love is blind where you have people sitting in pods not even knowing what each other look like talking in hopes to find love you know what I mean? Only to find out that these people are worthless and trash in their regular lives. They're not big backs. They're beautiful people. So this is not a big back thing. This is not a white thing. This is not a girl thing, a guy thing. This is people trying to find love in 2024. And I think Charlemagne was completely out of line for that because it was really corny. The fact is this. Let's talk about it for real, for real. They got Jess Hilarious on The Breakfast Club. She's the shock jock. She says all the shocky things. She's going, she's trending now. Charlemagne used to be that guy. He got a little bit boring. 
because he has all the celebrity friends. And so now he found this woman that went ultra viral. She has no real celebrity. But you know what? He went and took a lashing out on her instead of doing it to the celebrities because he wow, had Wow, Armand. So that was corny as hell for him. To yeah. Do. He wouldn't have done that if she was You a made a good point. Friend. But because she was viral and she's a no-name, you went and shaded her. So wow. Wow. Mm. Wow. Well, That's how I feel. Women tonight. <laughs> right. Do you do you Claudia, you fuck you, you ho. Have you followed his career? Oh, uh-uh. Have you followed his career? Absolutely. Look at Armand's face. He's pissed. He's pissed. Not this whole set. Oh, not you defending black women tonight. Uh, let, I got to drink my sweet tea. I'm so sorry. Because I'm about to get real spicy. I'm about to, I'm about to get real spicy. So let me drink my sweet tea, bro. Gee, shit. Like, gee, shit. I'm about to get real spicy. Let me see how this shit play out. Let me see how this shit play out. Let me let me see how this shit play out on God. On God. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm this hot. Is the most shocking thing that, 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 that Charlemagne has said about black women, but it's about emotion. black men, about relationships. I mean, this is this is this is on brand for him. I think he has been playing it safe because of the crossover Fuck that he's done into main media. But th he built. He came from the Wendy Williams people. He, that's where he was birthed. He built his influence in culture, black culture specifically, off of these type of comments. We can't ever forget how we got where we got, you know, and how where Shut we the got fuck from, up. What the brand is. Well, speaking of brands, we got to take a commercial. We are not going to have a brand here at TJ, but we need those checks to clear. Coming up, we have your tea check of the day. And later, find out what we would do in sticky situations. We'll see you soon. We'll see you then. Shut the fuck up, girl. Are you fast forward this shit? <laughs> I didn't want to see that shit, y'all. That was some ugly eyeshadow oh, wow. she had on that commercial. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, back, this show bitch. is sponsored by BetterHelp. Listen, we all try to get through this thing called life, and <laughs> sometimes we don't get it right. We got to circle the block and have those conversations. To, Go ahead and stutter, you know, right. We and listen. Sometimes we need a little help, okay? So, um... We have better help for that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, let me go ahead and go to you real quick. Uh, therapy. Have you ever gone through therapy or are you in it right now? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I've gone through therapy. Loser. In therapy currently. And fucking I've been loser. That's what you get. Years. That's why you're fucking up on the commercial because you was mean, trying to be nasty and shady Absolutely. to Let our mom, bitch. The thing that I use my therapist for is I use my, my therapist as a, as an emotional we don't give a fuck. coach <laughs> to help me organize my thoughts and help me understand if what I'm feeling is exactly what I'm feeling and help me process it as well as manage those emotions so that it's healthy. The people who manage Wendy Williams are managing this goddamn life. anyone is going through or trauma or trying to figure out their emotional state or mental state if they Sean, feel fragile bitch. or even not as strong as they I want like it Sean. A benefit for me all right thanks for sharing that now if you're thinking of starting therapy is the moderator help a try especially since it's entirely online it's designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule and all you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist Sean from and you switch wendy's anytime for no reason <laughs> wendy I mean, no additional charge now become your own soulmates whether you're looking for one or not yeah, once again this show up. is sponsored by better help so visit betterhelp.com slash tgif today to get 10 percent off your first month that's better help H-E-L-P dot com slash T-G-I-F. Promotional considerations furnished by BetterHelp. All right, y'all, let's get back to some more hot topics. We can all agree that social media tends to resurface some of the most random facts in pop culture history. So it's only fair that we unpack those facts in our tea fact of the day. What fact? What are you talking about? 
All right, y'all, the cheese brewing around the late Bobby Womack's lack of loyalty towards his best friend, the late Sam Cooke. Sources have been reporting that Bobby Womack broke the bro code after marrying Sam Cooke's wife, Barbara Cooke. Shortly after Sam passed away in the 60s. In addition to that, Bobby apparently wore one of Sam's suits to his funeral. Uh -uh. But it doesn't stop there. Bobby allegedly cheated on Barbara with her and Sam's 18-year-old daughter, Linda Cook. Jesus Christ, he's giving love and hip hop a run for his money. Okay. <laughs> Zeus is giving. All right, what are your thoughts on this heat back of the day? I'm not going to Armand because Armand don't know anybody older than Junior. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to go to Al first. Al, what do you think? Oh, I know that's right. You know, it. it these types of things happen a lot in that in that time frame unfortunately i think that it's it's bad it's not good but do you guys remember the story about um um marvin gay yeah. do you know the story about marvin gay no yeah okay so you know marvin gay is another one that a lot of people talk about then who had a child with denise gordy who is the 15 year old girl because he was he was married to Denise's mother, which I can't remember her name. What was her name? Do you remember her name, Claudia? No, but can production do a three shot? Cause I want to show the sheer look of confusion on Marvin Gaye. <laughs> He's looking you like- You know who Marvin Gaye is? Yeah. Okay, so Marvin Gaye used to be married to Denise Gordy, but he had a baby with Denise's niece who was 15 years old and they adopted her. We don't care. Like it never happened. So a lot of this type of stuff happened, you know, a lot back then. And you know, guess who Denise Gordy used to be married to? Denise Gordy used to be married to Richard Lawson, who is now Beyonce's stepdad, stepfather. Father, right or did they get divorced i'm not sure but this divorced. type of this type of creepy slimy back and forth sleeping with blind dogs like one person said <laughs> happened a lot in that time period and 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 not only did it happen with bobby womack but with somebody as as famous as marvin gay the gordy family we know who the gordy family is and is as even trickled into beyonce's family which is now you know the attachment with richard lawson Old people are hoes too. Let me tell you, and, and I had Bobby. I know this is a super hella random fact. I had this podcast called Reach Around Radio, right? It was a spinoff of the one on Foxhole, Foxhole with Jamie Foxx, and we had Bobby Womack on the show. I don't know why, okay, but we did. He was so open to talk about his STDs he's in front of it. He was off the chain. Armand, you would have really loved the messages because it was it would give these reality shows that you know you review sometimes or talk about or run for their money. Like they used to really get it in. Armand, um, you don't I, you don't have to know these people, but what do you think about the story? Why? Yeah, I just think I just think that that that's a little creepy. And then to be sleeping with the daughter. It just, I don't know, just weird because it's like, were you looking at her at a certain, I don't know, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't, I think it's weird. I think it's weird. I have to correct that. I have to correct something, Claudia. Um, Denise was married to Marvin Gaye. The, it's not her daughter, it's her niece. Okay. So Denise, is, Denise was the aunt to the little girl that Marvin Gaye got impregnated at 15 uh -huh. years old. Okay, so all the, our parents that say, oh, you young people off the chain back in our day, we said, nah, y'all was doing That's it. Y'all were on social media. So, y'all okay, was sleep with your, You don't sleep with your friends or ex. You know what I mean? Even if they die. Right. You don't sleep with them. You know, you did, and then you don't go marry her, the ex, and then sleep with the daughter. Like, that's crazy. Denise. <laughs> oh, Denise. Denise. It's a lot going on. You need to be like, okay, it's a lot going on. All right, y'all, keep it locked because coming up next, we find out what we would do in sticky situations, and later, we are playing a fashionable game of hit or miss. We'll be right back. Whether she should... Okay. Oh. I saw Turtle. My heart was full. He turtle jumped up and kissed me and like jumped turtle, into my arms. I immediately went up to the vlog. Welcome back to the show. I see you guys are a fan of the shade tonight because there's over 4,500 in the chat. So we see y'all. Make sure you rewatch it tomorrow. Hit that like button and watch it on all the other, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 other platforms. Who's counting? There's a lot. 
Welcome back, soulmate. Over 4,500. Yeah, you know, bitch. Unexpected situation. Well, we like for you to chime in with the uh, segment. Hashtag, what would you do? WWYD. You're welcome, oh ho. All right, in Karen news, a woman went viral for displaying erratic behavior after she hit a woman's car. Oh, ooh, yeah. Damaged. My car is damaged. Where? It's right here. If you want to see. You oh. Why are you hitting my car, lady? Yes, it's not damaged. Would you tell her to get away from me? She's crazy. It's not damaged. I mean, usually what you're supposed to do you're, you're in an accident yeah. is we exchange information. Bitch, are you okay? <laughs> exactly. And yeah, I but... know you're going to say sue, but <laughs> after you sue, what would you do if a Karen reacted like this to you? I think I would catch a charge. <laughs> I would catch a charge. It's just so interesting to me that they know how to turn that's off that ass and go stuff catch and charge off, like at the fucking. drop of a hat. And second, you're gonna hit my. No, nah, I would have caught a charge. That's no, I, you would have sprayed charge. your maze like Why? a bitch. I would have. I would have responded just like you. Like bitch, what? Because it's like they are so entitled. And they just you, you hit my car and you've already hit me like. We'd have got into it. I probably would have did something. Look how she holding that Haitian. We'd have got into it bad. For sure. Girl, you think you're going to touch my Bentley or my room, my range? We're going to fight, and it's not going to be on camera. You're going to put the camera down. We're going to deal with this. And I'm going to make everyone put their camera away so this heifer can't sue me. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right. An Atlanta woman was arrested after using a credit, uh, a credit privacy number, a.k.a. CPN, to purchase a set of veneers. Take a look. Hello, ma'am. How you doing today? Hey. Let me see your phone real quick. What's your name? Let me see your phone real quick. What's your name? Can I who? Okay. What did you... What name did you come here under? Um, my name. What? You came under here? Are you sure about that? Mm, what's going on? Okay, go ahead and stand up for me real quick. Uh, CPN may be advertised as a solution for those with poor credit history by providing a new false credit identity. What would you do if you were in this situation, Al? I wouldn't answer anybody that's asking me questions that sound like they're getting ready to arrest me. Okay. <laughs> I would right, say, yeah. excuse me, I got to use the bathroom. And then if they try to block me, because they can't block you from using the bathroom, if they try to block me from going to the bathroom, I would just use the bathroom there. But I would go call my lawyer. That's what I would do. Okay, Armand, thoughts? I'd have just told on everybody. That happened to me before, girl, and I just said it wasn't me, and I just started telling on everybody. So, <laughs> you know, I've been arrested. It didn't before. happen to you before. I was arrested, not for the veneers, but you know, for the fraud. You know, so and listen, I've been to jail before. I've been arrested, bid fraud. So, and I told on everybody. I didn't do it. They they created the account for me. They told but you me you used it. You they they, they made told me to sign. It. They made me. They told me everything would be okay. I don't know. I just signed for it. Okay, you just you you a little. Mm. Listen, out. Listen, I needed a car. Right. So being fraudulent is the best way to get it. At that time, that's the only. <laughs> oh, you goody two uh, shoes, light skin mulatto. Oh, fuck that. I needed to get where I needed to go. And you had to get you that high. I needed to get to Atlanta <laughs> for pride, baby, and I wanted to go in style, so I did that. Oh, and you went straight to jail. <laughs> Hey, Ro, do not put Armand in the same system that we're on. Oh, get the camera on me. Um, give Armand his money in a ring. Oh. I don't want him to be in the same system as Al and me and messing up. I don't know. It's HR. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are arrested. Obviously not. No, we messed with you. Thanks for being open about that, Armand. I know that was, you know, you've, you've, you've moved past that. No. Why well, did get convicted? I just got charged. You're still guilty. <laughs> oh, it was deferred. I I did. I paid my debt. I have no no record. You, I'm good. you snitched. <laughs> I'm good. What is about this third seat? You worked what is out about a deal. This third seat? Oh my God, we got a snitch oh. in the third seat. Oh. All right, let's move on for the okay. show. All right, a woman who recently went viral after grinding on a Nigerian artist Omale during his concert issued an apology to her now ex boyfriend. After he reportedly broke up with her due to secondhand embarrassment, secondhand embarrassment. Take a look. Really? I to apologize to him. Obviously, me and him, we've had private conversations where we spoke, but 
since it was public, I think the right thing for me to do is to publicly apologise to him. Like, that was bad. But, you know, I made a... All right, we don't have a lot of time to spend on this. I'm on real quick. What do you think? She went too far, so I, I get it. She, she was enjoying it too much. Usually I'd say I'm with it, but she was enjoying it way too much. Okay, Al. Yeah, kick her to the curb. You guys know how I feel about the whole Usher and Kiki and all these other grinding and putting your penis and she licking his forehead and poking it out. Mm -mm 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 -mm. She deserves everything that she gets. Yeah, um, I, I, I think that if you have someone, your job, you have one job really is to not embarrass your, your mate, you know what I mean? And I have to just take, you know. Is he a celebrity? I, I do like that she publicly apologized. I think that does show she does have some integrity. Like, hey, I embarrassed you publicly. Let me go ahead and embarrass myself and, and, and humble myself and apologize. So maybe they can work it out down the line, but she has got to learn to not do that again because I, I think that's whack when I see that. Right, oh, Claudia, hold on right before you go. I, I got to make that correction, make sure everybody understands because the soulmates are eating me up. Anna and Marvin were married. Denise is Anna's. Oh. All right, Denise had the baby with Marvin when she was fit, when she got pregnant. The good thing about that is you clarifying that all the people that know who people are are probably already asleep right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, all, right. all right, coming up, we are playing a fun game of Hit or Miss. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hit or miss, I guess you never miss, huh? He got a boyfriend, I bet he doesn't kiss no more. I never missed him. If you was a diamond. Worldwide hustle. Freedom to live without fear. Doesn't matter. Welcome back to the show. Now, before we head to commercial, check out this Black History Moment sponsored by Nissan. I'm so sorry, Nissan. This not it, though, baby. Base of being an activist for being blocked out of being able to commit to to com compete in pageants, you know, with their white colleagues. I mean, this is great, and I, I really want to know, and I thank Nissan for this because I really want. It's usually uh, in Indianapolis, um, that's where it usually is. Armand, what do you think about this? Al, I'm with you on that last part. Um, I love this. Um, I wish that we've seen more examples of this type of beauty for black women. Because now in today's culture, all we see is BBL stripper culture, you know. And me ha being the oldest out of like nine siblings with five sisters, um, I would like them to God, see more damn. examples of this. Um, type of black excellence that's and beauty. That's a lot so of goddamn like siblings. To see it more on an everyday basis versus, you know, once a year for, you know, Black History Month or a pageant, you know? Maybe it could start here on the on the black platforms or the black sensitive platforms. Like, maybe we should invite uh, the, the, the reigning Miss Black America Ooh. on the show. Well, we had them on uh, Cocktails of Queens, and I, I you know, we've, we've worked with them before here on Fox Soul, so we definitely have a relationship with them, and we actually aired the pageant before on Fox Soul, so we do work with them as much as we can. I will say this, crazy from that piece, right, that black women were not allowed. Yeah. Black women were not allowed to be in pageants and mainstream until 1970. Oh, we had, oh, sorry, we had some other, we had some black titles on the show. Award nominee Coleman Domingo, hit or miss? Hit miss. Hitting it with Wayman. Wayman, those stylists have kept him so well dressed, so well tailored that he's even profiled in GQ. I uh, did this on my other awesome video, y'all. Check me out. The fuck? Come on. I don't like the color palette together. I'm gonna say miss. Okay. How about Tyler James Williams? Hit or miss? Or my let's go to you first. Uh, miss, I don't like that either. I don't like the color. I don't like the bag of miss. I give it a hit. He has really been showing up on the carpet, all the ones that I've been on, and not just looking the same. Very tailored, very in fashion, in in, in trend, and also in color trend. I don't like the baggy suit with skating WNBA coach. All right, uh, Rocky Henson, hit or miss. You know what I'm saying? It's a miss. The dress is cute, but I... Uh, Taraji is in the face for me. She never feels the deal. Like, her face has always looked stressed to me. Like, she is. She's trying to get her money out. <laughs> Taraji is beautiful in this dress. I think everything about it is a hit for me, and the train is incredible. Taraji, 
You're going to be all right. All right. I want to thank my co host, <laughs> Al Reynolds, and Armand Wiggins for joining me today. All right. right. That was fun, y'all. I'm so happy that. Child, the chat is going crazy. My motherfucking tablet is lagging. I have fun. So I guess I'll see you hoes tomorrow.